Well, it is a uh, quite a rainy day here in Florida today. Quite uh, quite rainy. I got a little soak coming out here, but that is not going to stop us from hammering out some work on the case lot Sephiro build. It's been a very satisfying, very fun project so far, and the uh, next step is probably going to be just as satisfying, if not more. We need to build an intercooler pipe from here to here, an intercooler pipe from here, squiggle around, boom, to the throttle body and an air inlet from here somewhere over here is kind of my game plan we're basically playing with some pipes today <laughs> a lot of it so uh yeah enough jibber jabber let's uh dive right in oh last thing before i forget we have all shapes and sizes of merch on the site garagebuiltco.com if you're interested in helping support the channel we've got hoodies t-shirts a bunch of different designs um it, it's a great way to do it I, I much appreciate the support from there it allows us to do fun fab projects and get more tools to do better fun fab projects and buy tires tires are expensive Anyway, getting to work. Getting to work. We're getting to work. All right, we got a box here of Mishimoto intercooler piping. As you can probably tell, pretty much every single part of our cooling system, aside from the raw aluminum material, the flat sheet, has been Mishimoto stuff. They make everything. The fans, the radiator, the intercooler core, the quick connect, the piping, everything. I'm always so conflicted as to whether I like the look of a bunch of pie cuts or actually making pipes fit without having to pie cut them a million times. We've also got to put an electric power steering pump down in here, so we need to keep that in mind. It's nice when you use the same brand for stuff, like this pipe fits in perfectly. Oh, it's going to be nice to weld. All right, I guess let's uh, start cutting some pies and seeing if we can go from uh, A to B here, or A to B to C. All right, I think we're gonna have to basically extend this over, kind of as far over this way as we can, so we can take the pie cuts and curve it back to as tight to here as possible, but as far over here as possible, so that we can get the 90 in there. See how much flex these clamps have in them. It's right, right into the streak. All right, here's where we're at with the pie cuts. I need to get something to hold this pipe centered because I'm trying to base it off of it being centered so it has room to wobble around. But you can see basically what we're doing is turning back towards the inner core and then straightening out to give us more room for this this leg here. Otherwise, we'd be all the way up here in the 90. So as much as it looks pointless, it is definitely point, pointful, pointful. <laughs> um, anyway, got it pretty well dialed in. Just need to cut the 90, test fit that. 
Make sure that's good, and then tack it all together, which is gonna be the tricky part. to cut this end a little shorter. All right, I'm gonna attempt to tack this out of the car. I problem is the tape's gonna melt, but I'm gonna try to just tack tape, tack, remove tape, tack, remove tape. We'll see how it goes. Give it a shot. It's a good job for the thin rod. we did it we got it all tacked up out of the car with uh, minimal movement which is surprising and not that much tape melting so I'm glad that worked out that made life a lot easier than having to try to tack it in the car so uh, we need to weld this out but we need to get our 90 on next before we put the 90 on though we need to be rolling now if you recall back a couple episodes ago when we were doing the radiator hard piping I bought this cheap still to a hundred dollar bead roller off eBay. So the pipe kept walking off, the inside die here broke off, the handle all the way tight just falls right off. So you're cranking, cranking, and then the handle just falls off. So anyway, moral of the story is this thing was a piece of junk. I thought a cheap one would do just fine for how little I was going to use it. I was poorly mistaken. And in its place, so we have this Furic K2. Now this thing is, I mean it's literally the exact opposite of the other one. It's hand built, TIG welded, super thick steel, everything's super stout, the gear, everything. This is literally the polar opposite. It is a beefy freaking unit. We're definitely not breaking this one. So anyway, we've got this. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Furic company, they make TIG cups and stuff. If, if you know about TIG welding, you probably have at least one of their cups, but they also make a sick bead roll. So toss this in the vise and get our bead roll on. I don't know that this is going to work on this because we're kind of cut into the bend, but we're going to give it a shot. The problem is when it gets to here, the bend is pushing against the die. We still have another thing to bead roll, so hope is not lost that we get to enjoy using this thing. test fit, pull the o-ring out, and we'll get to weld it all out. Well, looks like that's gonna work. Seems so elaborate, but it has to be. Pull this out, pull the o-ring off, and we'll weld the old girl out. That's exciting though, look at that. Intercooler pipe number one done. I just wish I had my uh, couplers in. I always start with the bottom first, so I get in the flow before I move to the part you can see. I had to switch over to the vise because just getting to the weld. It's the hardest part about welding intercooler piping exhaust. It's always a weird shape. You can get to the top and the bottom, but then everything in between is kind of tricky. Like the inside inside here is going to be tough.
Alrighty, intercooler pipe done and dusted. Completely welded. Side numero uno. Uh, not happy with my welds. I mean, some of them came out all right. It was just, it was kind of tough getting in there, standing up and like reaching around the pipes. But I mean, people do it all the time and come out with good welds. So that ain't no excuse. Uh, we'll tighten up. We'll tighten up. I got to get better about taking my time setting up for the weld. A lot of times I just kind of rush through it. And even if it's a weird position, I know it's probably not going to work. I'll just start welding. I need to better set myself up for success with the uh, positioning and then also execute better. But hey, I mean, it's welded. Definitely not worried about it leaking or breaking or anything like that. Enough jibber jabbered on. I threw a weld here for our clamp. Got all this welded. It's all good to go. Let's uh, toss it back in. See what it looks like complete. about as good as it's gonna get. I'm happy with it. Cooler pipe number one, done and dusted. Lines up really well, all things considered. <laughs> Figure we would have a little more wonkiness after getting it all tacked together out of the car. I, I hate tacking stuff out of the car because a lot of times it moves and it doesn't fit right. It's always best to tack stuff in the car, but that's about what it'll look like. It'll be a little more level like that. I just don't have anything to hold up this end. The coupler will though. Uh, all right, fine, just sit like that. But yeah, look at that. I, the only thing I don't like is that it is so, it seems so over elaborate. It's not, it's basically what I had to do to get from A to B, but it just, it looks like I intentionally went out of my way to make it super long for no reason. But that's not the case, I promise. Yeah, anyway, looks good though. I'm happy with it. So much aluminum and TIG welding in this engine bay, the freaking radiator pipes, the intercooler, the freaking radiator, everything. Lots of aluminum, lots of TIG welding. Okay, moving on to this side. Let's get to it. Little guy, what bin do you think we should start with? You think we should go just straight for pie cuts out the gate? You think we should cut down a 90? Yeah, I don't wanna waste a 90 either if we don't end up going that route. I agree. So wet, bud. Yeah. Gotta make some more pie. I mean, that's pretty much it, surprisingly. All right, let's see if we can tack this thing together without disturbing it. I think that'll work. All right, I'm gonna try something a little different this time. I usually weld kind of hot and quick. I'm gonna try to weld a little cooler and slow. One thing that's tricky with aluminum, if you haven't TIG welded, um, you know, they all have their their quirks, but like, you know, stainless takes very low amperage. It's easy to melt, but it's really pretty straightforward. Steel, straightforward. The hard part about aluminum is basically, I mean, what makes aluminum good is that it's a good heat sink, right? So what happens is when you start welding with the piece cold, you might need 140 amps to really get that puddle going. But then by the time you're on to the sec, the end of the weld even, it's gotten so hot that you might only need 80, 90 amps, maybe even less than that to keep the puddle going because it has sucked in so much of the heat. So you're constantly adjusting. And I use this TIG button instead of a pedal um, so I vary the amperature. I just don't have as much resolution with this as I do with the pedal, but I'm really used to it. And like, you gotta stand and weld, it's way easier. So I just use this. But uh, anyway, moral of the story is, I'm gonna try to start, like, I set my max amperage colder. And I'm just gonna try to have to wait for the puddle to get going and then just see if that 
makes it a better result because then I can go a little slower with the rod feeding. I'm gonna start up here too. Or no, we'll start on this side. That definitely seems a little better. Still not great. gives me way more time to feed the rod. This whole time I was just welding at way too high of amperage. Idiot. This is why you always try things. All right, intercooler pipe number two welded out. You can see how much better some of the welds are. Just turning the amperage down. Why didn't I think of that before? I guess I didn't realize how high the amperage was. Because for something like this, I usually set it at 120 amps, and that's because I can get the puddle going immediately and get moving. Uh, but I turned it all the way down. What are we at now? 75 amps. And I mean, it took a second once it was cold to get the puddle going. Oh, sorry, this thing is so loud which is pretty typical with aluminum. Um, but once I got moving, I was still backing off the uh, the pedal, the, the button. So wow, lesson learned today. Always learning stuff. I'm always trying to progress. I really need to practice more. The only time I TIG weld now is when I'm doing fab work, uh, which I mean, I do a decent bit, but it's, it's not like I do it like someone who would do this for a living, you know, doing it all day, day in and day out. So I really should try to practice some more. But anyway, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Anyway. Enough jibber jabber. Uh, this is obviously cooled down enough. We can toss it back on. It's crazy how much shorter it is than the other one. I mean, it's a little tight to the turbo, but it'll work. Well, here it is with completed boost tube. I love when people call them boost tubes. I don't know. It's like a diesel thing. Cracks me up. Anyway, we are gonna put the power steering pump like right in here, so it kind of works out. Always learn things when you're building stuff. And that's the fun thing about building cars. Like every car I've put together, I've learned something. I mean, my Miata's on revision like three or four, you know, like it is very different from what it was when I first put it together. And so, and then, you know, I've learned and updated it and then applied that to other cars down the road. So, you know, you're always learning things, moral of the story, but I'm happy with it. I mean, it looks cool at least. It'll be nice when it, the, the coupler's in here and it sits level like that. But yeah, power steering, pump's gonna go here that'll look kind of cool because it's got a big reservoir so it'll be just right in the center of this it'll make it look a little more purposeful at least but yeah sweet uh we're still waiting on the couplers those won't be here until monday so we're kind of sol on that i'm also waiting on two and a half inch piping for this my plan is to bring this down over here behind the headlight with an air filter and then try to fit a small battery right here uh, we'll have to see. I might do a hard clamp on this guy. Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet. It's going to be tight. It's all tight. It's all a bunch of tight bends. So uh, for now, we don't have what we need to do that either. So we're going to move on to something else. All right, little guy had a good idea. He said we should try to do the radiator hoses. So if you didn't see the part where we built these uh, hard pipe outlets on the radiator and this mid pipe and stuff, we did all of that to attempt to run mostly straight hoses. But I still need to go to the store and get said hoses. So we're going to do some measurements, see what kind of links we need, and go try to find the right hoses from the store. Good, good call, little guy. That was a good call. All right, we've got our two hose potentials. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the intercooler and everything back out because it'll make getting to all this way easier. Easy enough. How long did that take? A minute and 30 seconds. All 
All right, lowers on. All right, got all the hoses on. Uh, this one ended up being a little too short. I wasn't quite able to get all three hoses out of that little stretch, but this one came out good. No kink, it had a slight bend in it, which worked out kind of perfect. This one might be a tad short. I might try to replace it too, but I'm gonna have to run the store, get more hose, but it is cool to see them, see it with hoses on there. And guess who just showed up? Old Benny Boy McGee, and he put long champs on his 240. We, uh, when he got the car, he was like, I want to put long champs on it. And he talked about some other wheels. And like, we both liked the other wheel idea, but I was like, I just don't think anything's going to beat long champs. And, uh, nope. 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 You nothing. Cannot beat the long you champs, can't beat boys. the long you champs. You got to show him the good side, though, where I didn't scratch it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, whole technical difficulties. <laughs> Look at that, dude. It looks amazing. It looks so good. Oh, and I, I never showed you guys, but he spruced up the interior. Kept it brown. The brown suits the car because it matches the two-tone and I don't know. It just looks good. But anyway, he's got the interior pretty well dialed. He had some sweet thrust gauges. It's solid. Those things come together so well. Anyway, Ben's 240. Looking sick. Back to work on the Sphere. I'm going to run to the store, get a different hose. All right, well, I went to the store, got another hose, and uh, it was too big the inner diameter I thought it was going to be, but it looked like it'd be close. We're good on the hose front, just got to get another one for there. I'm going to put the intercooler back in. I'm going to start working on some ducting. All right, so to make our V-mount system effective, we need ducting to force all the air coming in here to go through the radiator or up through the intercooler core. If we don't do that, there's not going to be a whole lot of air going through this thing. We did get a vented hood, and the purpose of the vented hood, I mean, the looks were part of it, but the main reason was to allow the air to go through the intercooler and escape out the hood. Um, otherwise, uh, for this car, it would have just ran a stock metal hood, but we need that airflow going through the intercooler, or we're going to have hot intake air temps. Now, I don't think a V-mount like this is going to be the most efficient setup in terms of cooling the air down, but the benefits are nothing past the core support in case you get in any sort of wreck. Super short intercooler piping, except if you're like me and you make this super elaborate one. <laughs> Just overall packaging in general, accessibility, everything being easy to work on, like a minute and a half to install the intercooler. But the downfall is you're not getting as much air through it as you would if it was in front of the radiator here and direct line of sight to the air. So to combat that, we need to do some ducting and try to keep as much air going through these as possible. So time to whip out the CAD. Eight inches. Well, I can make it out of cardboard that'd be pretty easy. All right, well, sev several CAD templates later. Got it fitting pretty good. The bottom needs to tuck in just a little bit, and then this needs to come out just a little bit to better match this curve, but we are pretty dang close to the shape we're going for here. Looks like a pizza. It does. Pepperoni on it. Got it fitting pretty good. Nice and tight all the way around. I just need to put a bend right about here to get it to tuck up to this. Now, yes, I could cut this out and make this straight, but you know, I wanna work around the, the factory sheet metal. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we gotta put our little bend in it and then we should be about flush here and here. But so far it's fitting pretty good. All right, we've got our lower dies adjusted out to give us kind of a wider radius. We're gonna just put a light bend in it. All right, well that is the main shape of one side done and dusted. We'll modify our CAD template a little bit to match this side more perfectly. Got it, bend it, see how it looks.
All right, well, I am pretty dang happy <laughs> with the fit up there. That was a lot of different angles to try to match on such a big piece. All right, we've got our little bracket welded on our plates, and I threw these rib nuts in. Got a transfer punch in there, so we'll put this into position, give it a little tap with the hammer. That should transfer a punch spot to our bracket here for us to drill and everything be perfectly lined up. That's the plan, at least. Also, welding lower amperage works way better. Who would have known? Who would have known? Go. It's one. All right, now we just gotta weather strip these Johnnies. the top right here. All right, well, it took a little more massaging on the front with the belt grinder just because of the added thickness of the weather stripping, but we got it. We got it fitting so good. Oh man, I'm so happy with how it turned out. The bend ended up being just right. I mean, it's not perfectly matched, but it pretty much matches this curve. This one ends up being in just a little bit, just at the top, just because of where the bracket and the hole is. Now, I mean, I guess I could, I could wall her out the hole a little bit and tuck it in. I'll probably do that now that I just thought of that. But, but anyway, overall, aside from this wiring hanging down in the way, blocking the view, the view came out really good. I am so happy with that. That is exactly what I envisioned. This has been really fun. Overall, all of this has come out pretty much how I envisioned it. And that's rare. Normally it's like, oh, I'm gonna do this this way. And then you get to that point and you're like, oh, it doesn't fit because of this or that. So. Anyway, for all of this to turn out the way it did, stoked. I can't wait to have the power steering pump here because this will look more purposeful and get our silicone clamps on. Uh, really, the last bit of fab work, we got to do the intake, the air inlet, and then we've got to do the exhaust. And then we're done with fab work, finally. I know it's been a, I've enjoyed it. I'm sure you guys are getting a little bored of it, but um, once that's done, fab work's done. It's wiring, turbo uh, oil and water lines, power steering pump, power steering lines, um, some coolant hoses, and that's it. And that's everything, it's done.